Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone welcome to the course on medical biomaterials we will continue on the topic of biofilm uh, which is the most important topic in the entire uh, um, biomaterials implants and devices that is why I am trying to spend more time on this biofilm and as I said uh, what is this biofilm it is a population of microorganisms at the interface uh, it may be surrounded by extracellular polymeric uh, substance EPS it is called you may have live cells dead cells um, protein, sugars, polysaccharides, metabolites, quorum sensing signaling molecules, uh, some of the cells uh, uh, maybe will be at a different uh, genetic level, uh, they might have st stopped growing at a faster rate uh, and so on actually, which may lead into persister cells or drug resistant cells. So, the formation of biofilm is a very serious issue on medical implants, which can lead to chronic uh, um, inflammation, infection, rejection of the material as well actually. Okay. So, they, so, one needs to put in lot of effort in eradicating biofilms in implanted devices. Can I design new material um, which will be free of uh, these type of uh, uh, attachment of uh, bacteria or fungal species. So, what are the factors that affect the bacterial resistance in biofilm? Biochemical factors, molecular mechanism, and altered host factors that means what happens on the surface or what happens in the environment and so on. The biochemical factors include exopolysaccharides that are produced by the organism which sort of forms like a layer. Um, the bacteria may be producing certain antibiotic degrading enzymes which will degrade the antibiotic thereby making it inactive. Uh, the extracellular DNA which is also um, hiding the support of the biofilm, efflux pumps, bacteria produces certain efflux pump uh, uh, proteins which throws out uh, whatever foreign material that enters the bacteria. Um, it, these efflux pump help in throwing out antibiotics or antibacterial toxins, dyes and so on. Quorum sensing is a signaling molecule that is produced by bacteria especially when they are in a group. Um, it helps them to move from a SSL form or mobile form into a stationary form or a biofilm forming form. If you look at the molecular mechanism, there could be gene transfer, the lateral or horizontal gene transfer, there could be mutations in the uh, microorganisms, all those could be causing the resistance in biofilm. If you look at altered host factors, um, because of the biofilm and because of slow diffusion, uh, the concentration of the antibiotics may be very low at the bottom of uh, your biofilm. So, that could be sub MIC leading to resistance, oxidative stresses, the amount of oxygen present especially at the uh, bottom of the biofilm could be very low leading to oxidative stresses. This could be because of SOS type of response, chemical signalings, toxins, antitoxin modules that are produced, nutrients, um, availability of nutrients are very low temperature changes in the biofilm, pH changes in the biofilm, cell density, osmolarity, all these are factors which are part of the host which affect the um, bacteria in the biofilm leading to resistance. So, um, I also talked about uh, the diffusion which plays a very important role uh, at the surface of the biofilm that is at the external you may have certain amount of uh, antibiotic. Okay. But then uh, as it diffuses inside based on fixed first law and second law, um, the concentration uh, of this antibiotic could be much much low. Okay. For example, if the concentration at the surface of the biofilm could be this much, um, it may be falling drastically down and at the bottom it could be practically 0. So, if you have a constant amount of antibiotic present on the surface that means fixed surface concentration, um, these slowly as a function of time. Uh, this concentration graph may be increasing. Okay. This T3 is greater than T2 greater than T1. Okay. So, that is this is valid only we have a fixed surface concentration of antibiotic. 
Okay, whereas, uh, if you have a fixed amount of antibiotic, that means you place a certain amount of antibiotic and uh, that is it. Okay. So, initially um, at time very low time at the surface of the biofilm you may have very high concentration as we move inside the biofilm the concentration may drop drastically, but uh, these amount also will start falling down like this. Okay. So, as a function of time this uh, graph will become like this and like this. So, in both these cases as you can see as you move inside from the surface of the biofilm the concentration of the nutrient or antibiotic or oxygen will fall drastically due to the, the diffusion processes. Hence, uh, the bacteria which are inside when compared to the bacteria which are much near the surface of the biofilm, um, they are facing different environments which is leading to um, changes in their growth pattern which is leading to some gene changes which is leading to antibiotic resistance and so on actually. Okay, so, that is a very serious problem which arises due to diffusions. So, what are the biochemical factors, bacterial resistance? Um, I also mentioned that there are enzymes which are produced by the bacteria and these are called antibiotic degrading enzyme such as beta lactamase. Now, these beta lactamase um, enzymes that are produced by bacteria can uh, break antibiotics which have this beta lactamrin. Okay. So, these defensive enzymes in the extracellular space can uh, help in breaking certain antibiotics. Okay. Extracellular beta lactamase inactivate the antibiotic penetration and protects the deeper lying cells that is cells which are right at the bottom. Okay. So, that is one more problem. So, um, the biofilm associated persister cells that is cells which uh, um, remain even when you treat with the antibiotic. Okay. How do we address them. Okay. In original days, um, they thought of having a material which is able to address this persistent cells like composition, surface topography, implant dimension and currently what do they do is they incorporate antibiotics in the uh, material surface. So, that they releases antibiotics or antibacterials, uh, it, it could be protein based, it could be small molecule based. Um, bone graft based materials, polymer based materials that is a current. Uh, future uh, one is thinking about dispersing agents, bacteriophage releasing materials, surface modification, surface coatings um, interfering with the bacteria. So, that is the strategy that is being thought of in the future um, to address this persister cells. Okay. So, but this problem of persister cells, um, antibiotic resistant cells in biofilm is a very serious problem and there is no single strategy to eradicate all of them and there is no single strategy which can be used for different types of biomaterials in different environments. Okay. So, biofilm preventing strategies one can think about changing the surface of the implant um, such as coating with anti adhesive coatings that means, you do not allow the bacteria to adhere, adhere settle and bind releasing of bioactive coatings. Um, inherent bioactive materials, materials which are inherently bioactive, nitric oxide releasing, reactive oxygen species release, photo activated materials, nano structured materials, these are all changes we can do on the implant surface. Um, developing inhibitors which will inhibit this quorum sensing, because I said quorum sensing is a group uh, behavior and um, the quorum sensing molecules tell the bacteria that uh, they have now a large group of uh, bacterial population. Okay, can may have biofilm dispersions, can I have down regulating the expression of those laxi, laxar which I talked about, antibiotics, natural products, drug delivery carriers, okay, having biodegradable polymers which can um, release drugs such as chitosan, hydroxyapatite, dendrimers, hydrogels, all these are um, different types of uh, natural and synthetic uh, polymeric carriers which can release drug. And then there are other uh, ion toporosis, vibro acoustic stimulation, bacterial interference, bacteriophage, autologous platelet rich plasma. So, these are all different types of approaches that are being practiced. Um, some of them are in industrial uh, that means, in real life and some of them still are in the research stage. Okay, we will look at some of these um, examples of biofilm preventing strategy. Okay. Uh, for example, 
how can I prevent this um, persistent cells? Okay. Um, for example, uh, if you look at uh, this particular acyl dep C peptide factor A and its synthetic derivative peptide factor 4. Okay. Now, these are known to kill persistent cells, these are small peptides, okay. <coughs> these are known to uh, kill persistent cells and also eradicate a chronic biofilm infection uh, based on this particular reference. Okay. Um, so, combination of this particular uh, peptide and rifampicin which is a well known antibiotic, uh, it has been studied um, and found that the, they together can eradicate staphylococcus biofilms in vitro and deep seated chronic infection in even animal models like mouse models. Okay. Uh, then another compound like bromo, bromo, methylene, methyl furanone, uh, it sensitizes E. coli persistent cells to antibiotics. So, if I take this particular uh, furanone and combine it with the antibiotics, I am able to kill um, persistent E. coli cells. So, brominated furanones seem to be a very good uh, choice of um, sensitizing uh, um, antibiotic resistant cells and that has been shown in many examples in this uh, particular reference. Okay. Again um, certain antimicrobial peptides as you can see here which has got a arginine and tryptophan type of peptides, um, these are known to be effectively kill both uh, planktonic and biofilm cells of E. coli in a concentration dependent manner. That means, as you increase the concentration, they are able to eradicate uh, um, in a linear fashion. Uh, especially the biofilms formed on 316, 316 L stainless steel surfaces, these cell, these surfaces are used especially in um, orthopedic implants. Okay. And uh, interestingly, even uh, low levels of uh, direct current microamps per centimeter square um, are able to um, eradicate certain persistent cells in combination with another antibiotic. This is an example where they have tested low levels of uh, DC um, and uh, tobramycin that is an antibiotic, they are found to kill pseudomonas aeruginis or um, persistent cells. And again um, D leucine, D methionine, D triosine, D tryptophan act in nanomolar concentration. Uh, so, we can combine these uh, D amino acids uh, with antibiotics to prevent the biofilm formation especially in uh, Staphylococcus aureus and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Um, there are many examples of that actually. Okay. Again uh, uh, norspermidine inhibits biofilm formation of uh, both Staph and E. coli. So, there are uh, as you can see combination studies where uh, um, you can use a amino acid with an antibiotic or even direct current with antibiotic or certain peptides and antibiotics. So, that uh, the persistent cells can be sensitized for the um, treatment with the antibiotics. There are a lot of uh, anti biofilm surface modifications coatings that are being studied, there are a lot. I am just showing you a few uh, examples here, but there are many many examples uh, if one goes into literature. For example, silver is widely used as an antibacterial um, nanoparticles of silver, silver nitrate, silver ions and so on. So, as veterinarian organic inorganic nano composite with antimicrobial and anti adhesive capability. So, we can combine things to achieve both antimicrobial and anti adhesive surface. When you say anti adhesive that means, the surface is basically not um, antibacterial, but it prevents the attachment of bacteria polyethylene glycol modified chitosan. Okay. So, polyethylene glycol is very hydrophilic. So, it helps in preventing the attachment of bacteria. We can even um, incorporate some antibiotic inside, so that it also acts as a killing agent. Antibiotic loaded polymer coatings. Okay. So, the quite a lot of uh, drug eluting stents if you have read about, um, where they coat uh, Metal, metal stents with the biodegradable polymer and it may contain drugs, um, drugs in the sense antibiotics or anti inflammatory. So, as the polymer slowly starts uh, um, degrading, the drug gets released. Zwitterionic coatings, like you can have an NH plus type of zwitterion. Formulations of silver, zinc, copper. So, a lot of other metals are also being tested and they have been shown to have antibiotic. Uh, or antibacterial activity. Silver is quite strong, um, zinc and copper they are much milder than silver and they have also been used as uh, um, nano sized composites to prepare materials. 
immobilizing enzymes. Lot of enzymes have been immobilized uh, like papain, like protease, um, okay, which has uh, the antibacterial activity because uh, for example, if you take protease, um, it can cleave the, uh, the amide bond thereby it can kill bacteria. So, immobilizing enzymes on material surfaces, coating antibiotic coating, immobilizing antibiotics on top of various surfaces. So, lot of approaches um, where we are talking about uh, um, immobilization of proteins, immobilization of antibacterials, antibiotics or slow release of antibiotics uh, or use of metals, metal ions um, such as silver nitrate um, or nanoparticles have been tested um, as an antibiophilum. Another approach is to make the surface more hydrophilic. Okay? So, when you make the surface more hydrophilic, you are, we are preventing hydrophobic uh, um, organisms settling down because uh, uh, bacteria uh, contains um, quite a lot of hydrophobic uh, surf patches. Uh, so, the hydrophobic uh, bacteria does not settle down. So, you are making the surface um, anti adhesive, you are preventing adhesion or attachment. It is not really antibacterial but it prevents um, attachment of the organism because the surface is very hydrophilic. Another approach that is being looked at nowadays quite a lot is surface topography. Can I create surfaces in nano scale, nano roughness so that uh, you can prevent uh, bacterial attachment. Okay. Why does uh, uh, if you take shells uh, do not get uh, biofilms or biofouling? Why does not uh, take whale for example, which is always found in water, shells are found in water, um, they, they do not have any attachment of bacteria because they have certain rough surfaces uh, which are called nano topographies which prevents the bacterial adhesion um, and biofilm formation. So, can we create surfaces like that? So, there is nowadays lot of interest in this area, surface topography, creating nano surfaces, nano indents. Um, nano scale indents, different types of roughness and so on actually. So, they will be inherently um, anti adhesive, can we create surfaces like that on uh, say titaniums, um, so they will be inherently preventing attachment of uh, microorganisms. So, so many different approaches um, that are being looked at actually and it is an exciting area for one to do research. Um, can I combine uh, these uh, anti adhesive property with antibacterial uh, release and so on. So, the antibacterial may be released in the early days, early stages where the infection probability is very high, but uh, when you have inherently anti adhesive surface, then long term bacterial attachment can be prevented because uh, the antibacterial release cannot be sustained for very, very long term. It can be sustained for maybe 2 weeks, 4 weeks, 6 weeks. But oh, after that period of time, the inherently built in anti adhesive surface will take over and uh, there will not be any attachment of uh, bacteria and so on actually. Okay. So, that is uh, quite an exciting area to look at. I think uh, anti biofilm itself is a very exciting area and one could spend lot of uh, research effort in that. Uh, like I said, uh, uh, the biofilm is an issue in whether it is an implant, devices, drug delivery system and various parts of the body. Um, environment is so different, so the type of uh, bacterial attachment, the type of requirements for the um, biomaterial could be different depending upon uh, where it is going to be located. In addition, if it is going to be located for say a few hours going up to weeks or months or years, then again the uh, requirement of uh, antibiofilm changes dramatically. So, um, there is always possibility of doing good research. Now, let me spend little time uh, and show you uh, some of those uh, case studies where this type of strategies have been tested. This is based on some of our research, our own uh, research in our in my own lab. Okay, for example, if you look at uh, these uh, stainless steel 316 L, these are bone plates used after an, uh, after a breakage of the bone. Okay. So, these are grooves. Um, so, attachment of bacteria, infection, biofilm formation is a very serious issue here. So, we looked at uh, using uh, poly L lactic acid 
mixed with silver nitrate and we coated on top of it. Silver nitrate will be the antibacterial, this will be slowly degrading, this will be the carrier for that. So, we could have antibacterial surface. So, that was our idea and as you can see here, um, these are uncoated material, this is after coating with the poly L lactic acid. Okay. So, the lactic acid can have two forms, the D and the L form. Okay. And um, so, we are coated with the 0.5 percent silver nitrate and as you can see here staphylococcus adhesion, this is uncoated surface um, after 24 hours and this is the coated surface and silver is well known antibacterial material and silver nitrate, the silver ions really kill the bacteria. As you can see a big difference in the attachment of a, a microorganism on the uncoated surface as against the coated surface. So, this is quite dramatic. Um, Let us look at another example. Okay, so, there we are talking about having an antibacterial material like silver and doing the job. Now, here uh, what we did was uh, um, we have a polymer material, this is a polyurethane. Polyurethane is used quite a lot um, in uh, medical um, urethral stents uh, or even uh, guide uh, tubes um, and so on because it is very flexible. Um, and it is almost like rubber, um, but uh, bacterial attachment is a problem. So, in this example what we did was um, we tried to um, immobilize a, a glucon which is called a curdlan, it is an oligosaccharide. Okay. So, it becomes a non-adhesive glycoclex type of surface. So, the polymer itself polyurethane has a very high contact angle, it is very hydrophobic. So, as we immobilize this, okay, then the hydrophobicity goes down, it becomes very hydrophilic. So, the attachment of uh, organism uh, as I said on hydrophilic surfaces is much less when compared to the hydrophobic surface. So, here the, um, glu uh, cyclic, the, uh, sorry, the glucon the, or the oligosaccharide does not have any antibacterial property, but it makes the surface hydrophilic. So, what happens? Uh, the bacterial attachment goes down quite a lot. As you can see here, um, this is the polyurethane, uh, this is the polyurethane with this immobilized uh, um, oligosaccharide glucon. Okay. So, the bacterial attachment goes down by a factor of 2.5. Okay. This is uh, with the bovine serum albumin. If you, if you recall, I said if you have uh, albumin, albumin prevents uh, bacterial attachment. That is why we here also we see less bacterial attachment. This is with Staphylococcus aureus okay, after 4 hours and these experiments are with Pseudomonas aeruginis. Both are uh, um, bacteria which are found in many infectious situation. Okay, now, if you look at uh, Pseudomonas uh, with bovine serum albumin, I am able to reduce the bacterial attachment, but um, with the, the glucon we do not see much reduction in the bacterial attachment. Again, it is to do with the hydrophobic, hydrophilic nature of the um, surface of the microorganism as against Staphylococcus aureus. Staphylococcus aureus is very hydrophobic, surface becomes hydrophilic, so the bacterial attachment is less. Whereas, here um, there is not much difference in the um, hydrophilic, hydrophobic nature of Pseudomonas aeruginosa, so the bacterial attachment remains the same. So, uh, this example tells you I can achieve um, changes in the hydrophilic, hydrophobic nature of the surface, thereby I can prevent attachment of hydrophobic uh, bacteria. Okay. Relatively, when we talk about hydrophobic, hydrophilic, we are talking relatively here, please remember that. Okay. Okay. Um, Let us look at another example, when you look at another example, okay, here we are um, immobilizing a material called polyvinyl periladone iodine complex on a polymer. So, it releases iodine continuously and as you know iodine is a antibacterial. Okay. So, we have a polyurethane surface and we have immobilized something called polyvinyl periladone iodine on that and um, as it keeps releasing iodine which is an antibacterial. Then we looked at the biofilm. As you can see, uh, this is the polyurethane without any changes. This is the polyurethane which has this PVP iodine um, complex 
and trap on it or coated on it. So, a, a big difference in the bacterial attachment, okay. there is practically no bacteria. This is Staphylococcus aureus and this is Pseudomonas origin. As you can see, um, the bare polyurethane, there is a lot of attachment of uh, the Pseudomonas, whereas uh, once I modify the surface with this iodine complex, um, attachment is practically 0. Okay. And um, you may wonder what these are, these are more of uh, uh, surface modification um, after attachment of this, these are not biofilms here and here. Okay. So, this is a different example, third example I would say uh, where I am talking about um, having a coating which slowly releases an antibacterial material. Okay. So, again we see a very good uh, reduction in the um, uh, biofilm and attachment. Uh, let us look at another example. Okay, here I have immobilized something called uh, an enzyme here, enzyme or a protein here. It could be a protease, papain and so on, which has uh, um, certain effect on uh, pro uh, amide bonds that means they can kill bacteria. So, I have a linker here. Um, so, this is the polymer surface, I have a linker and I attach a protein. Okay. Then uh, I am trying to see whether um, this type of design can reduce the bacterial attachment. So, as you can see in this picture, this unmodified polymer um, bacteria, two types of bacteria, staphylococcus and different type of bacteria here, whereas when I modify it, you can see complete eradication of biofilm, absolutely no biofilm on the surface. Okay. So, uh, in this design, what I have? I have immobilized some proteins on top of it okay, um, using a linker the advantage of having this type of design. So, I have a covalent uh, linkage. So, the surface uh, life will be um, stable for a very long period of time unlike uh, the drug eluting where after a few hours or few weeks the drug will be completely washed out whereas, here I am forming a covalent bond. So, obviously, um, these are very strong bonds, the protein will be always present on the surface. So, this type of surface can always be antibacterial and these are um, examples as you can see the bacterial attachment on unmodified surface and um, once the surface is modified with immobilizing this particular protein, you can see practically no bacterial attachment at all. Okay. So, this is very fascinating. So, we looked at so many different uh, examples um, where I talked about slow releasing of iodine which can prevent a bacterial. I, then I talked about immobilizing a protein or an enzyme which can act as an antibacterial. It can kill both the gram positive and gram negative bacteria because some of the, um, uh, for example, if you take papain, uh, it acts on both the um, amide bond as well as the ester bond. Um, or we can modify the surface so that the surface becomes more hydrophilic, thereby you prevent attachment of hydrophobic organisms um, that is another approach. Then you have another approach where we can have uh, antibacterial surfaces built into the uh, polymer okay, so that uh, um, biofilms can be prevented. So, there are so many different strategies. Um, in my lab, we are also working on those strategies and sh I showed you a few examples of uh, these strategies. We will talk more about these uh, biofilms um, in the next class as well because as I said, the biofilm is a very important uh, topic which needs to be addressed and different strategies are being practiced and hence uh, I thought uh, I will cover some of these strategies uh, as uh, we go along. Okay? Thank you very much for your time.